Hey guys, hope everyone is going uh, super well and hope you've all had a great weekend. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to be able to get a factory ride. Uh, so we'll wait a little bit for a few people to be able to jump on board. We've had one of our hottest days in a while over here in Perth. It was 37 today, uh, which is pretty hot for us. And then we got 18 in a few days' time, so uh, the jumper will be back out. So we're going to be focusing on or what I want to be able to talk about today is how to be able to get a factory ride in 12 months. Okay, and how to be able to get the attention of the um, of the big teams, Yamaha, KDM, um, Suzuki, whatever team or whatever teams are, are big in your sport, whether that's enduro, whether that's trials riding, whether that's motocross, the MX Nationals, whether that's uh, MotoGP. Okay, um, and th- this came from an interesting conversation I had today um, with a a young racer. Okay, um, that was aspiring to uh, be in the MX Nationals, wants to be able to to race at an MX Nationals level um, and be able to get paid to do that, okay? Wants to be able to do that full time. Um, and that's cool because there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of riders and racers that have that exact same goal, okay? Um, that want to be able to work. So everyone wants to live the dream, right? Everyone wants to be able to, um, to, to go and ride, to go and race at a high level. Everyone wants to get paid to, to go and race. Now, one of the things that this particular um, rider hasn't do, which isn't common, which is why I'm talking about on, on here, is that the, the, the goals and ambitions for the, the coming years were much lower than what he actually needed to be able to achieve his goal, okay? And this comes from, from the people that you surround yourself with, okay, and other people's expectations. So something I hear a lot uh, from a lot of riders and racers, having, speaking to, to hundreds of riders and racers um, and speaking to them on a daily basis, is that they set their goals too low. Okay, most people uh, think that they got their goals set too high. Hey, Cody, but most people have their, a lot of riders and racers have their goals set too low. Okay, you need to be able to approach your goals um, as, you need to be able to make sure that the goals you're trying to achieve are in line with your long-term goal, okay, or the the things that you want to be able to achieve away. So this particular person, this particular racer wanted to be able to, to get a factory ride, okay, like most people do. Now, the first thing that needs to be able to happen, I said, what, what's, I said, what are your goals for next year? He goes, okay, I want to be able to get um, top five next year in the state and then uh, run top 10 the following year in the MX Nationals um, and hopefully uh, someone will, will pick him up. Okay, and that is the biggest mistake right there that a lot of riders and racers make is because they're hoping. They're hoping, they're praying, they've got their fingers crossed and they're only trying to achieve things that they think will be, that they think other people will think possible, not what they think are possible, okay? So for this particular rider, um, I said, okay. I said, you want to be able to get onto a factory ride? I said, let's reverse engineer. I said, where do you need to be to be able to get onto a factory ride? And he goes, well, and he goes, I want to get top 10. I said, okay, okay, well, it's top 10 going to secure you a factory ride. And he goes, oh, I'd probably have to, to cross my fingers and be a little bit of luck to, to whether you've got a factory ride being in the top 10, okay, running in the top 10 in the English National. I said, okay. I said, what would absolutely guarantee that you get a factory ride without an absolute doubt, okay, that uh, a manufacturer would be, have to be an absolute dick, would have to be absolutely blind to not take you on board as a rider and racer? And he goes, top three. I said, okay. I said, what would have to happen then for next season, the coming season on a state level, for you to be able to be ready to, to get out there into a top three? Okay. Um, and he goes, okay, well, I'd probably have to, to win and do well. I said, okay. And I said, are you capable of doing that over the next couple of years? And he said, yes. Okay. He knew his ability. He knows what he's capable of. You guys know exactly what you're capable of and what you can achieve. It's only the other people surrounding you that change your that change your mindset on what you're actually working towards, okay? It's the people around you that are are framing what's possible and what's not not possible. I hear from a shit ton of riders and racers that they want to be able to get into that top 10 and they're not going to be able to compete with the factory bikes and they're not going to be able to, to, to do well. They're not going to be able to get into the top five because they don't have the equipment because they have to travel more because they have to sit in the car because, um, all these bullshit excuses. The only thing holding you back from being successful is you, okay? It's not the equipment, okay? It's not the traveling. It's not anything else. It's you, okay? You are the thing that holds you back. Uh, those guys that are on factory rides, 
have done the hard work, have done the hard yards, okay, have gone from being outside the top 10 to being inside the top five, okay? They've done the hard work to be able to get their factory rides. Their factory rides didn't get handed to them. They didn't get a factory ride by saying, oh, all the factory guys have better equipment. Oh, all the factory guys have better facilities. Oh, all the factory guys have private test tracks. They didn't get there by saying that stuff. They got there by doing the work and getting the results. The only way that you're going to be able to get a factory ride or get attention from uh, factory teams, okay, is by beating factory riders. If your plan, if your game plan to be able to be a factory rider to be on, on a team, okay, is to be the first privateer, then you're missing the point. Factory riders are because they're factory riders, okay? It's not that there's all factory riders and then you. You need to get in between those factory riders, okay? Because that's what's going to separate. That's what's going to grab people's attention. When you start beating factory riders, when you start beating guys that are getting more support than you, that are getting more help than you, that have better equipment than you, then the manufacturers are going to look at you and go, holy shit, we need this guy on our team. He's beating our guys, okay? And we pumped 100 grand into to bikes, making sure that this guy has 10 bikes there ready to go, okay, making sure he has equipment that money can't buy. Um, and, and that's what you need to be able to do. You need to be able to get those kind of results, but most people don't aim for that. And like I've talked about before with goal setting, if you're aiming for, if you're, you don't know exactly what you want and you, you're not 100% confident in your goals, then you're not going to be able to achieve them. You can't reverse engineer. If your goal is to be able to get top 10, okay, um, and, and then you, you and let's just say you get your top 10, that is not going to guarantee you a factory ride. It's not going to guarantee you that you get to ride and race for the rest of your life, okay? And no, there are no guarantees, but what we can do is just about guarantee because if you're running in that top three, so look at, perfect example, Daniel Reardon, back in the day, okay, I remember watching the Supercross when I was a little fella. This, was a, this goes while, back a while now, and there was Ryan Marmont, okay, who was winning all the races, who was really, really super dominant in the lights class, and all of a sudden, Dan Reardon, no one knew who Dan Reardon was. On his way, it was Kawasaki, okay, wasn't a factory bike, comes out, and starts competing with Ryan Marmont. All of a sudden, he's winning races, coming second, okay? And he is, he's up there, okay? And now you look at him, and he's on a factory ride, he's been on a whole heap of teams, okay? He gets a whole heap of support, a whole heap of media attention, because he put in the work at the start, okay? Right, um, Daniel Reardon did not rock up when he was racing Ryan Marmont and go, oh, shit, I can't beat Ryan Marmont, oh, shit, I can't beat all these other factory guys, because they're on factory bikes, I'm not on a factory bike, so I'm not going to be able to beat them. I'm just going to work on being the best privateer. He didn't get a factory ride by being the best privateer. He got a factory ride by being the best racer because at the end of the day, that's what teams want on there, okay? They don't want the best factory, the, the best pri privateer. They want the best riders and racers. That's why they're on the team. So if you're, you're aspiring to, um, to be on a factory team, to be able to get paid for racing, then what you need to be able to do is you need to have goals that are going to be able to get you there. Okay, if you're thinking small when you wanted to run top 10, you're wanting to get the privateer award, uh, then that's not going to secure you a factory ride. Okay, it's not going to secure you getting paid to do what you love for the rest of your life. You need to have goals that are actually going to help you achieve what you want to achieve. And you need to be honest with that and reverse engineer, okay? You can't be hoping, praying, wishing, fingers crossed, all this other bullshit, chance. Don't leave it to chance. Have goals okay, that are big enough that they scare you, but they're also confident that when you achieve those goals, when you achieve those goals, they're going to be able to get you into a position of achieving what you want to achieve over the long term. And a lot of riders and racers, I would say almost a lot, a lot, majority of riders and racers don't have that. They don't have goals that line up with being able to help them get to a factory ride. If you have a goal of getting in the top 10, okay, and you know that a top 10 is not going to get you a factory ride, then what's going to be your drive to get to a top 10? Oh, work your ass off for the next five years, finally get a top 10 and then still not get what you want, okay? You need to be able to set accurate goals of what you want to achieve. Um, and if you fall short, that's cool, okay? If you're aiming for a top three and you get top five, then sweet, cool, okay? But by, by positioning yourself, by having goals that are, are small or not going to help you achieve your, your end goal, then you're holding yourself back. Okay, um, you're, you're putting it, you're, you're holding yourself back, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure because the thing that you want is not the thing that's going to get, the thing that you want over the short term is not the thing that's going to get you over the long term. So it's always about reverse engineering, okay? Um, and I'll do this with you guys as well. So think about, if, you, if you're watching this live stream and you want to be able to get a factory ride, you want to be able to get paid to race, okay? Whatever, any sport that is, not just riding and racing, any sport, where do you need to be? What kind of results do you need to have, Okay. What you need to be able to, to do, exactly, Ben, that's exactly right. 
No goals, no drive. You're already defeated. That's exactly right. So what you guys can do is what you can, or what you can do right now is think about, okay, where do you want to be? What's your end goal with racing? Okay, so if that's to be able to get a factory ride and get paid to be able to train and race, awesome. Sweet. Okay, when do you want to achieve that by? That might be okay. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, that's going to happen over the next two years. Okay, boom. It's going to happen over the next two years. Now, reverse engineer from there. Okay, where do you need to be at the MX Nationals over the next couple of years to be able to make that happen in two years' time, okay? Where do you need to be running? Do you need to run top five? Do you need to run top 10? Do you need to run top three? Where do you need to be that it would be absolutely ridiculously stupid for any factory team to not have you on their team, okay? Think about this. If you've got a team full of factory riders and there's some guy on a privateer bike riding your machine, okay, that's not a factory bike, that traveled to here, that's sleeping in the back of his van, okay, that's doing it the hard way and he's beating the factory guys, that factory team is going to, is going to take you in, okay? And if they don't, someone else is definitely going to snap you up, okay? Um, and, and that's what you need to be able to do. You need to be the person that causes the upset. So you need to be able to find out, okay, what do I actually need to achieve to just about guarantee my success as a long-term racer, okay? So that might mean winning. That might mean coming top three. That might mean coming top five, okay? And then what you need to do is go, okay, I need to be able to get top five. That's what I need to be able to do. MX Nationals, I need to be able to get top five to be able to secure a, um, a team, a deal, a contract, okay? Then you reverse engineer from there. Okay, I need to get top five. What did I come this year? Okay, I did the MX Nationals this year and I came 15th. Okay, you got to find 10 spots. Then you go, okay, what is holding me back? What are those guys in the top five doing? What are they able to do that I'm not able to do that's stopping me from getting there? Okay, that might mean they take more care with the nutrition. That may, might mean they help they have someone that helps them with the nutrition. That might mean they have more accurate training. That might mean they have more precise training. That might mean more, they're more consistent with their training. Maybe that the guys in the top five know that training is not something they like, so they have a coach with them, or they have someone to be able to help them. Maybe that means that um, the guys, and then it could, so that's training related. It could be maybe um, racing related. Okay, maybe you know this year that okay you were running top ten. And it was only really in those last five to 10 minutes of the, the 20 minute moto uh, or half hour moto that you, you drop back to 15. Most of the, the motos you, you were running top 10, but then you slipped back to 15 because your fitness wasn't there. Okay, go and get help with your fitness. Okay, maybe it's speed. Maybe you know that the tracks with the, um, with the biggest jumps were the ones that you didn't do well at. Maybe jumping wasn't, your, wasn't really your thing. You, you suited well with more ski jumps and smaller stuff, whereas the tracks with the bigger jumps were something you struggled with. Go and spend a shit ton of time practicing jumps so you get better at them, okay? Maybe you find that, okay, with the Nationals, maybe you did well at every single round except Coolum because you were, um, you were shit on the sand, okay? You didn't like rough tracks and you, were, you, find it shit on the sand. you found that you were shitty at sand. Go and practice a shit ton of sand, okay? Whatever it is, you need to be able to start with the end in mind. Find out what you want and then reverse engineer from there, okay? You need to be able to be honest with yourself. You can't bullshit yourself into, into saying that a top 10 is going to get you a factory ride if it's not, okay? Don't, don't go with the maybes, might have, could have, should have, uh, might, okay? Don't go, go with the definites. Don't gamble. Don't take a gamble on what you're working towards. Go with definites. So if you need to get a top five, work out what you need to do to get a top five. If you need to get top 10, work out to, to what you need to do to be able to get a top 10. But make sure that when you get those results, that that's going to be something that guarantees your success to be able to fuel you into a factory ride or into a paid ride or contract or whatever you're after, okay? Don't work on, don't work on oh, all these guys are above me and then I'll try and be the first guy below those because those guys are below for a reason. The reason these guys are below here is because they don't have what these guys have, okay? They haven't done what these guys have done. They haven't got the type of results that these guys got. These guys up here, okay, these top top five, top ten factory guys didn't get into that, didn't get a factory team by being the first privateer. They didn't get a factory team by being the first person down here. Okay. What they the way they got there is by being one of these privateer guys, mixing it with these factory guys, and then they made their spot there. They cemented their spot there. And Dan Ridden is really is really one of the big examples that really stands out for me. Okay. Um, of, of someone who's who's been able to do that super successfully. Okay, coming up from uh, a privateer, being on a machine that was not factory based, okay, surprising the shit out of everyone, grabbing everyone's attention, and then for sure, on a factory ride. Okay, you would have been stupid not to give um, Daniel Reardon a factory ride when he was winning, on his, winning races on his Wales Kawasaki. Okay, um, so that's just a little bit for you guys to know on, on factory rides. I know 
Um, I know there's a lot of you out there that want to be able to succeed with your racing, want to be better, but you need to be able to set your goals to a standard and hold yourself to a standard that allows you to be able to get there, not set yourself up for, for failure, okay? Not tell yourself that you need a top 10 when really you need a top five, and then you need to be able to reverse engineer from there. Um, so I hope you all found this useful. If you guys know anyone, if you have any um, riders that are, are mates that are in the MX Nationals, that are in the um, Ace PK, that are in uh, the Enduro, um, in the enduro scene that want to be able to do well and want to be able to get paid for what they do, tag them for me, please, okay, so they can see this, so that they understand. Don't let them set themselves up for failure. Don't let them um, try and reach for, for goals that aren't going to get them to their long-term goal, okay? Um, help them out and, and tag them for me, please. Um, so I hope you guys have a, uh, a great day. Uh, train hard, race harder, um, and also give this video a like if you um, thought it was helpful. See you guys. Have a good day.